Where in the World is Carmen Sandiego Deluxe Edition was a PC game released by Brotherbun Software in 1992. It's an educational game intended to teach geography and history. In this presentation, I'll analyze the game and then offer two redesign ideas that I think would make the game more educational. So I'm going to be looking at the game in terms of the Edge framework. It's a tool for analyzing educational games, and with it, you look at the game from three different perspectives. There's the learning objectives, that is, what knowledge or skills do you want to impart upon the player? The instructional principles, that is, what best practices or techniques are you going to use to achieve those learning objectives? And the mechanics, dynamics, and aesthetics, that is, how does the game actually function, and how does this provide a certain experience to the user? Let's look at the mechanics first. So the game is composed of several cases. In each case, one of Carmen Sandiego's henchmen has stolen some priceless artifact, and you, the detective, are charged with chasing down the henchman and restoring that artifact to its rightful owners. You accomplish this by flying to cities all over the world, and in each city you gather clues as to where the henchman might have gone next. For example, you might talk to the locals or inspect physical evidence. Once you use these clues to figure out where the next destination is, you fly there and then the process starts all over again. And then after four or five uh, destinations, you track down the henchman. The game also comes with an almanac, and in theory, um, you know, all the clues could be solved by doing research in this almanac. Uh, which brings me to the dynamics of the game. So the game comes with a clock, but time only moves forward whenever you make an action. So the dynamics are very relaxed. The user can move at their own pace, you know, taking half an hour if they need to on a single clue. This also supports younger children because that means they can go talk to their parent or older sibling and, and get some help. So what about the aesthetics of the game? I think that the narrative of the game is very important. You're trying to capture Carmen San Diego, and this is a pretty fun narrative, especially as you're tracking down the henchmen. Um, it also incorporate, incorporates fantasy in that you are actually the detective and you know, you're the one tracking down the villains and solving these clues. The game is challenging. Um, it is difficult uh, to interpret these clues. There are some very tricky ones and you know, words and vocabulary that you haven't seen before. And it becomes increasingly difficult as you move forward in the game. There's also an aspect of discovery. You're learning about new cultures. Um, and then sensation. Uh, everything on screen is interactive and lights up and makes sounds. Um, so it's a very tactile and immersive environment. Uh, the learning objectives of the game, so obviously you want to learn geography. Uh, the prior knowledge needed for the player is simply you know, basic reading and computer skills so they can uh, make the game work. Um, and then they also need to know how to use an almanac. Um, the, students are, the goal is for the students to learn facts about each country that they visited, so basically trivia or knowledge. Um, for example, they'll obviously learn how to point it out on a map, but then also what is the currency there, uh, what languages are spoken, etc. And then uh, out of game transfer. So, for example, if um, a player you know went to Paris and then they heard about it on the news, now they know where to put it on a map. They can put that news into context. And then of course they've learned the skill of how to use an almanac, so they can use that not only for geography or game research, but for any research at all. And then finally the instructional principles. Um, so the game uh, incorporates spacing learning over time because you're going to visit a country and even cities over and over again over the course of the entire game. So you're um, sort of not just looking at a country once but over and over again. Um, and then also incorporates the idea of testing and immediate feedback. So every time you use the clues to figure out where the henchman has gone next, you're essentially being quizzed on the knowledge you've just learned from the almanac. And if you choose incorrectly, you find out immediately instead of, say, three destinations down the road. And then finally, the game incorporates the multimodal principle. For each country, you might see pictures of the country, a text description, and then also perhaps audio uh, with music or a spoken language. All right, so um, we talked a little bit about the, how the game functions now, so how might we improve it? So my goal here was sort of um, one way you can visualize it is moving up the Bloom's taxonomy period, pyramid. At the bottom of the pyramid, you're simply memorizing facts. At the top of it, you um, understand the domain so well that you can actually create new ideas from it. So in order to achieve this, uh, there are two redesign ideas. Uh, the first one is the idea of introducing region-based gameplay. So currently each case is randomly generated. There's basically a big bucket of clues associated with different cities, um, and then the game just randomly chooses some to put together a case. So no two cases are different. However, all the destinations, there's no connection between them. So I think it would be better if the game instead traveled the world region by region. For example, in South America, and then Africa, and then Asia. So you'd learn about the region as a connected whole. Uh, I think this would improve the game because this new structure would support 
understanding instead of just knowledge acquisition. The student wouldn't simply have to remember facts, but they'd also have to understand, uh, start understanding patterns in a region. For example, they might see, oh, a mountain range goes through these three cities, or there's a historical connection, or maybe the languages are shared across these different countries. And I think to build upon this even further, uh, my second idea is the idea of introducing a region with, um, uh, sorry, at the end of each region, you would have a boss level. So this is like a special case. Instead of simply following clue after clue and going destination to destination, the player would have to figure out a pattern in the destinations in order to, to f choose the final one. Um, and it's crucial that this pattern is uh, solvable uh, based on clues that they've already seen in the region. Um, they shouldn't have to learn anything new. Instead, they're reviewing knowledge that they've, uh, they've just learned. So for example, you might start out in Quito and then follow the henchman to Lima and then La Paz. And then you'd have to figure out from the pattern that you want to go to Santiago next because these are all major cities in the Andes. Uh, and then the final boss would be capturing Carmen herself, and in that case you need to find patterns across the entire world. And an example of this would be countries where Portuguese is spoken. Um, I think this would really uh, continue to um, sort of advance uh, the student's knowledge of this topic because they'd move from understanding to applying, because they'd have to apply all the knowledge they'd learned in that region, and then they'd also have to analyze that to find patterns. Um, and since it's structured in this way, it's also a scaffolding, so um, they're moving from easier to more difficult um, uh, tasks. Uh, I think one possible aesthetic change is that this definitely increases the challenge of the game. This could be good for people who um, enjoy that. It might be more engaging, but it might uh, dissuade younger players. So in conclusion, um, I think these two redesign ideas would build off of each other to make the game that's not just a tool to increase knowledge of geography, but also understanding about how different regions in the world work together.